What's going on YouTube? Happy New Year and today we are counting down the top five best tech to look forward to in 2022. Granny Geek Show is back, took a break for the holiday and we are hitting it with so much content at breakneck speed so you're going to want to get subscribed and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show. All right, so for the countdown, we're going to start with number five and end with number one. And number one is kind of a scary one that we're going to have to be very particular and careful about how it's implemented. Stay tuned. All right, so kicking it right off with number five, I got to give it to cryptocurrency. Guys, crypto has come such a long way since the early days of Bitcoin, and it really exploded in 2021. Definitely helped and sometimes hurt by celebrities like Elon Musk, who can send the stock price rising or dipping really badly with a single tweet. He made an appearance on SNL earlier this year. Um, and while it got mixed reactions, I think it's solidified to mainstream people that crypto is here to stay. And what people are finding, myself included, is that it's a great and fun way to diversify some investments from Dogecoin to Shiba Inu to Ethereum, you name it. Cryptocurrencies are being accepted in more and more places. And while they still have their pros and cons, they're not susceptible to some of the vulnerabilities as non-centralized currency that we have in the world today. So I definitely look for crypto to explode even further come 2022. And from there, I want to move on to number four, and you're probably going to be surprised that it's this low on the list. It's the iPhone 14. Now, it's going to be an amazing device as iPhones typically are, but I would imagine that smartphones, while they are not going anywhere anytime soon, they're reaching that maturity uh, where people are starting to look for the next big thing, the next revolution in technology, the next iPod, the next iPhone, the next Apple Watch. Um, and we're going to get to that a little bit later. But the iPhone 14 is set to have, of course, the 6.1 and 6.7 inch sizes, but it's going to have an under screen face ID system and potentially a fingerprint reader. This technology has been around for a while and it's been shown by other phone manufacturers that it can work under the screen and it can be reliable. So I would imagine Apple would be ready for that in 2022. But we're also going to, of course, get the A16 chip, which is just going to be insane as we've seen Apple Silicon just flip the tech world on its head all of 2021. Um, so we should expect no different with the A16 chip. And we're also rumored to get no camera bump on this iPhone. Now, the iPhones have had camera bumps for a while, even before, well, around the iPhone 6 time, iPhone 6 Plus, when those came out. And so to see that go away, I think is is going to be a welcomed improvement. Definitely, they made the iPhone 13 thicker, so maybe with better technology and optimization for battery life, they'll be able to make a smaller battery, keep that same battery life, and then move that camera bump right in there. So the iPhone 14, I don't think anybody was concerned that it was going to be a great phone. Uh, definitely, if you want to see all the best phones of 2021, MKBHD has a fantastic video. The smartphone awards that he does at the end of every year. So a link to that will be down in the description below. From there, I want to move on to number three, and this is going to be a big deal for my creators. And I'm talking about another one from Apple, the iMac Pro. Now we've already seen what Apple Silicon can do with M1. And then they took it to another level with M1 Pro and M1 Max. So this iMac Pro, it's kind of up in the air, but people are expecting it to have even better performance than the M1 Pro and M1 Max that we're finding in the Apple MacBook Pros today. Now, first let's talk about what it's even going to be called because the 13 inch MacBook Pro is just called MacBook Pro, the 13 inch MacBook Pro with M1. And the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, which just came out, they're not called anything special. It's just the 14 inch MacBook Pro with M1 or M1 Pro and M1 Max or the 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro and M1 Max. So we have the iMac that came out in 2021 with that light color palette of colors. And for this iMac Pro, people are assuming that it's going to be fewer color options, maybe just a silver and a space gray. Could be more. Who knows if there are? I would assume they're more muted, kind of darker colors, maybe earth tones. Who knows about that? But with the naming, could it just be called iMac with M1 Pro and M1 Max? Could it be called the 27 inch iMac? Uh, we didn't see much for the screen size in the, the consumer grade, I guess, if you want to call it M1 version of the iMac. Would they just call this the M1 Pro iMac? Uh, the naming is going to be confusing, but this thing is supposed to be an absolute beast. So combining the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips um, respectively into bigger chips 
in the system. And it makes sense given that the iMac body is and the chassis itself is going to be bigger and have better thermal abilities than that of the MacBook Pro or even the M1 iPad Pro. Um, and so why not make the chips bigger? Why not make the fans bigger, move more air through that system and really crank uh, those M1 Pro and M1 Max processors to see what they're truly capable of. I know a lot of people are going to be waiting for that Mac Pro, which I would assume would come out in 2022, 2023. But this will be the first real taste of what Apple can do with a desktop with their Apple Silicon Unleashed. Definitely excited to see what they do with that. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And from there, I want to move on to number two. We talked about the future of the device, right? We talked about how the iPhone is reaching kind of a maturity where it's not going anywhere, uh, but it's not as exciting, certainly, as it was back in 2007. And so in comes, yeah, the third entry from Apple on this list. I know electric vehicles are going to be something to look forward to, but I actually think 2021 was a great year for electric vehicles. Um, it, it may be equal to or even better than what we see in 2022. But I want to talk about Apple AR, Apple Glass. So this is the Apple Glasses project that's going to use mixed reality or AR, which augments the real world with digital assets that you can manipulate and control while still looking at and being in the real world. I think this is the next logical step for technology to go. And Apple has already been so deep into AR. I mean, you look on the back of an iPhone, you have the LiDAR scanner right there. Um, augmented reality is a big part of the App Store and even some of the apps that they have. We see Amazon allowing for virtual tryouts of things. You can take a device that you're thinking about purchasing and put it in your real space. That's an example of augmented reality. And so with the Apple Glass, we'll be able to constantly be in that world. And I know that's going to make a lot of people like, hmm, is that something we even want? Um, but Apple Glass is definitely set to make a debut in 2022. And by saying that, also Google Glass is supposed to have their device come out. So definitely ready to compete. And it will be just in time for number one on this list, which I think we're going to have to be pretty careful about. And that is the metaverse. So tech people far and wide are talking about Facebook changing its name to Meta in order to further um, just solidify their stance on AR and virtual reality. The metaverse is a place that is digital where you can create your own avatar, be whoever you want to be, and go to these virtual spaces, buy virtual clothing, eat virtual food, uh, go to concerts, do all these things, and live in a virtual world. I know it sounds like something from a movie. Um, and while as a fan of tech and a geek myself, of course, I'm excited to see all this stuff, but you can't help but say, hmm, is this the matrix? Like what, what's, what's going to be happening? How could this be used in good ways and also in bad ways? I think it's very important to stay healthy as people make sure you're getting exercise, make sure you're eating healthy. Uh, so many studies have shown that people are having trouble detaching from their devices. And that's when they're just in their hand and they can put them down at any time. Imagine a device that's on your face pretty much all the time, just like you would wear an Apple watch. This device is on your body at all times and it allows you access into the metaverse, into the virtual world. That's going to be very difficult to detach from. And you know that these companies are aware of that. And of course, they want to sell advertising. They want to be able to have you impulsively buy things or, or after, you know, much consideration buy these things. Um, but they study human nature and they study the way that uh, we look at advertisement and how and why and when we make purchases. And so to be in a virtual space where maybe an ad pops up every once in a while, uh, that's something that people are going to have to consider. Now, in terms of the Apple Glass and the metaverse, I don't know if Apple and Facebook are going to be working too closely. Um, they typically have not been buddy-buddy with everything, but certainly Apple would be able to develop the hardware to be used in a uh, for a platform like the metaverse and Google as well. So the year of 2022, I think, is going to be the year of AR. And let me know what you're excited about for, for AR and also what you're concerned about if you're concerned or why there shouldn't be any concern. Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, I love chatting it up with you guys. And let me know what you thought of this list as a whole and what tech did I miss? What are you excited to see in the year 2022 when it comes to tech? Hey guys, that's that's the end of the video. You can click up, what, what's that? A bonus? You wanna hear about a bonus technology? Ready to explode in 22? Let me think. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked, cause actually, no, I'm sorry. I, 
forget the shameless plug. Uh, me and my dad have actually been working on a brand new technology that's gonna help creatives make an actual living wage off of just their streaming, whether that's music, short films, whatever they're creating. Uh, so the book is called Destroy Digital Media Platforms and the technology is called Competitive Streaming. You can check out this book, link will be down in the description below. Uh, it's really gonna change the game. We definitely saw the vulnerabilities in the industry when the pandemic hit. People weren't able to physically meet in places anymore and that created a serious financial problem for a lot of independent creatives. Well, those days, are behind us as this book and the concept of competitive streaming is set to change all of these industries. You're not gonna wanna miss that and it's ready to explode in 2022. So there's your bonus technology guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. The Granite Geek Show is kicking off 2022 with more content and better content than we've ever done. This is gonna be hopefully a fantastic year for the channel as well as our sister channels, the La Quente Ledger, uh, for Baseball Banter, for We Sibs. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming. So links to everything I just talked about will be down in the description below. Hit the like button, subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss this. We cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. Oh, and let me know if you like the new intro. I'll play it now.